Greetings. Zai, the great one himself, out here on my hike, still doing an anarchy moment. I got another water crossing. This one looks like it might be a little scarier. But I think I see a way to get through this without getting soaked. And more importantly, without destroying my recorder. That's the important thing. If I get wet, I'll dry. Oh yeah, I got this. Not a problem. If I drop the zoom into the water, then I'm fucked. Not the good kind of fucked either. As I was walking down the trail here, yep, got across the water without dying. As I was walking down the trail here, I encountered anarchy. I ran into two volunteer rangers. That's right, volunteer rangers. Rangers who come out to the National Forest here, do their thing. Here, listen to this. Is that sexy or what? Does that not make you wet? It should make you wet. God, I fucking love this. Ran into two volunteer rangers who volunteer their time, come out here, walk the trails, you know, do good stuff, patrol the trail, take care of shit, educate people by talking to them. And yet, many of you out there would say, but who would build the roads? Many of you out there believe that if the government shuts down, well, you have to shut down the forest. The national forests have to be shut down because the government ran out of money. And without money, the forest can't grow. Why? Without the government, who would pay the rangers? Well, maybe some people would volunteer to be forest rangers. Maybe they'd do it all on their own accord without getting paid for it because they would do it because they enjoy it and they have pride in being a caretaker of the outdoors and because they enjoy being in the forest and they enjoy talking to other people. They enjoy giving advice. They gave me some advice about which trail to take when the trail splits. Maybe that's what would happen. So there's no need to do all of this panicking. Now, speaking of panicking, <clears throat> walking past more hikers who are going to look at me like I'm crazy because I'm talking to myself. Speaking of panicking, you know what panics me? Ooh, it's going to... It might rain. Good thing I brought, because I'm a good little anarcho-capitalist, I brought my poncho. I can handle it. Ooh, it actually is raining. Okay, speaking of panicking, not the rain. I may have to pause this, hold on. All right, I'm back. Oh, and also while I was talking to the rangers, I found out the hiking trail I wanted to do today was Young's. And they were telling me that with the fire two years ago and then the last flood, it just got destroyed so bad that, well, it's, it's in really bad shape. They said there's a lot of tree damage up there blocking the trail and stuff like that. So that's really sad because I only did that hike once. And it felt really long, probably because I was going really slow, kind of like I am now. When I go hiking, you know, and this goes back to what I just talked about in the previous edition of Anarchy Moment, where I talked about differing worldviews. Some people go hiking and they move quickly. They want to walk fast, they want to hike fast, they want to, I don't know, get to the trailhead and get back. You know, maybe that's their goal is for speed, or maybe they have other stuff to do that day. I mean, and all of these things are perfectly understandable. I, on the other hand, hold on, listen to this. It 
Is that fantastic? Or is that fantastic? That is the beautiful sound of running water out here in the woods, out here on the side of a mountain. I got a giant fucking slab of stone over on my right hand side. Got some trees, got some pine trees. I got a river, I got flowers, I got butterflies. You know, this reminds me of, I'm all over the place, hang with it. I'm gonna come back to the gut, let's see, the gut, is a great hike. Oh, okay, I'll come back to that. Reminds me of a guy I talked about, especially a lot in the past on the podcast, Bernard Rowland, the philosophy professor. We were sitting in one of his classes one time, and somehow or another we got on this topic because all sorts of weird topics come up in Bernie's classes, which is good. That's what makes him a good teacher because he's also a fucking statist, and that's what makes him a bad person. But he's a good teacher. We got on the topic somehow. Listen to this. Ah, they stopped. There were some birds singing. You probably missed it. Anyway, we got to somehow talking about being in the city versus being out in nature. And Bernie says, well, I'd much rather be in a, in a city than out in nature. I'll, every, a fucking tree looks like a fucking tree to me. I don't need to see more than one tree. And I'm like, dude, I, well, this is, this is it. This is the differing worldview. Because for me, being in a city is usually pretty fucking boring because one Starbucks looks just like another fucking Starbucks. One Walmart, you've seen a Walmart, you've seen them all, right? I can come out here and wander around in nature, out here with the trees and the rocks and the water. Listen to this. See, I can come out here and I can cope with this all day long. I can look at this shit day after day after day, and I'm good, 100% fucking good. I've seen a Starbucks. Hey, I've seen a Starbucks. I don't need to see another motherfucking Starbucks. And speaking of things, I got another water crossing. See if I can get across this one without doing a face plant. This one actually looks safe enough. I can just keep recording while I cross the water. (laughs) Ha! Famous last words. Right? Right. We've all heard this shit before. All right, going in. Oh, hey, I made it. All right, let me close my parentheses here. Some people like hiking the trails really fast because that's their worldview. I like hiking the trails really slow because that's my worldview. Some people like walking around in cities because they think cities look different and they think all trees look the same. And that's their worldview. Some people like walking around in nature and, you know, I'm not, I'm not against walking around in cities. It's just that I can, I, can spend, I can spend an entire day out here. I mean, literally an entire day. A full fucking day I could spend out here. I could come out here at sunup and stay until sundown and never be bored. And to pull that off, walking around in a city would be really difficult for me. Because... One Starbucks looks like another Starbucks to me. And one tourist trap, a kitschy souvenir shop looks like any other tourist trap, kitschy souvenir shop to me. But you know what? You know what terrifies me? This is, where I, this is what I was originally going to talk about when I started the podcast, maintaining the tradition of not talking about what I was going to talk about until, you know, 15 minutes into the fucking cast. And in this case, I can't say, no, you don't know. That's why I'm telling you, you do know. If you've listened to Stating the Obvious or Anarchy Moment more than four or five times, by now, whew, I almost stepped on that cactus. That would have been uncool. You know by now it takes me anywhere from nine to 15 minutes to actually get to the fucking point. Sometimes more than that. In fact, probably most of you who listen on a regular basis just skip the first five minutes anyhow. 
you're probably the most intelligent people among my listeners. What I was going to talk about, what frightens me, what terrifies me, is the fact that so many people do not understand there actually is no correlation. Wait, no, causation. Correlation, causation. There is no, <laughs> there is no causation or correlation, actually, because correlation is not causation. But what I'm about to say is actually there's no correlation or causation. There's no correlation between intelligence and attending college. Now, where does this come from? This comes from just, I'm going to, this is just a little story. I know I've told this story before on stating the obvious way back in the day. But it's been a while. And I probably need to retell a number of my stories from the past. Because I'm sure those of you out there who have started listening and who are listening have a life. You don't go back and listen to the past episodes. And here comes another hiker who will think I'm crazy because I'm talking to a small metal device. The good thing about cell phones is that now when you're talking to yourself, people don't think you're as crazy anymore. Back in the day, he probably would have screamed and ran away. But now he just assumes I'm insane or I have a cell phone and I'm a 14-year-old girl that I can't live without my cell phone. Anyway, the fuck was I talking about? Oh yeah, college and intelligence. There's not really any kind of direct correlation between those. And here's my story about that. Back in the day, when we walked uphill to get everywhere, when I worked at Colorado State University in the animal research department where we tortured and murdered small animals and called it science, we had a veterinarian and so to be a veterinarian, you have to go to college for four years and you get a degree in something. Then you go to vet school for four more years. So anybody you meet who is a veterinarian has eight years of college plus 12 years of public education. Okay, so we're sitting here and we're in this meeting and we're discussing cages and having the cages having water in them. Because guinea pigs, when you put guinea pigs in their cages, guinea pigs like to bust their water bottles open and dump the water into the cage. So then the bottom of the cage gets filled with water. And this is difficult to deal with. It's also not healthy for the guinea pig because the guinea pig is essentially swimming around in mud. And, you know, depending on when the guinea pig breaks the bottle, the animals are supposed to be checked every 24 hours. I say supposed to be. And depending on when the guinea pig breaks open the bottle, pops the top off the bottle, he doesn't actually break the bottle. The bottle is plastic. The guinea pig could be wallowing around in an inch of mud for up to 24 hours. So this is obviously not healthy for the guinea pig, and we have to keep the guinea pigs healthy because, of course, we're going to torture them and kill them and call it science and get federal funding for that with your tax dollars. Anyway, we're discussing this, and we were discussing ways to alleviate the problems that come from the water spilling into the cage and flooding it. And the vet technician, who was also happens to be a girl, because women are so fucking intelligent. The vet tech says, well, I found out about this product, and these other people are using it, and it's this bedding you put in there, and it's essentially like a paper, and so when it gets wet, it absorbs the water, and so it's not going to get as muddy, as muddy, if I can talk correctly. And in addition to that, in addition to absorbing the water, it also makes it weigh less. Now, let me, let me clarify, because I did a really bad job of paraphrasing what she said. Let me clarify exactly what she said. She said to us that if you took this paper-based product, you put it in the cage, when the water spilled into the cage, the paper-based product, which is the bedding in the cage, would absorb the water and 
cause the water to weigh less. Twelve years of public education, eight years of college. And at that point, another woman in the room who has a degree in art looked at her and said, you cannot alter the specific gravity of water by absorbing it. An artist, a degree in art, and she knows you cannot alter the specific gravity of a liquid by absorbing it. Twelve years of public education, eight years of college, two titties. Completely fucking stupid.